how to crochet a granny square. So to get started, I'm going to chain five and then I'm going to put a slip stitch into the very first chain to make a loop. Once I have that loop, I'm going to chain three for, to start my row and then I'm going to put two more double crochet into the center of the circle. After that, I am going to chain two and that'll indicate the first corner. And then I'm going to put three more double crochet into the center. And then after the three double crochet, I'm going to chain two again for my second corner. And I'm going to put three more double crochet in there, chain two for my third corner, three more double crochet in there, and then chain two for my fourth co corner. And then I'll let you know what to do next. For this video, I'm only going to do the first row um, to keep it short and sweet and so that I can be a little bit more detailed on the other rows. But while you're watching this, here's a fun fact. There are no crochet machines. Every single granny square that you've ever seen has been handmade by somebody. So here I'm going to slip stitch on top of the chain three. The chain three there is considered a stitch. The first double crochet of the round and that's round one. It still looks like a circle, but eventually it'll square out into the corners. I'll put part two in the comments. And here is row two of the granny square. I finished row one by slip stitching on top of the chain three. And now I'm going to slip stitch three more times until I get to that first gap. And this is where I'm going to start building the corners. So I'm going to chain three and then add two more double crochet into the gap. And then once I have my two double crochet, I'm going to chain two and put three double crochet into the same gap. The chain three at the beginning there does count as a stitch, so it's three double crochet, two chains, and three double crochet for one corner. In between the corners, I'm going to chain one, and then I'm going to put another set of three double crochet, two chains, and three double crochet into the next gap. And that'll be my second corner. Corners three and four are worked exactly the same way with a chain in between the corners and then two chains at the center of the corner. And while I'm working my way around, I figured I could share some fun facts about the granny square. So the original granny square appeared as early as 1891. And it was so popular in the U.S. that in Europe, it was actually considered American crochet for a while. It's the most commonly recognized crochet pattern. And that's because it is very easy to work. It's very versatile. You can make it into blankets or clothing or pillows. You can use any size yarn, any size hook. And it's a fun way to experiment with colors, sizes, you can make a bunch of little tiny granny squares and sew them together, or you can make one giant granny square. It works up very quickly. You don't have to use a lot of yarn, which means it's also very cheap. And there is no machine to do it, so every time you see a granny square or anything crocheted, it's always been handmade. Now to finish off row two, I'm going to add a slip stitch to the top of the chain three and I'll put row three in the comments. Welcome to row three of the granny square. I'm going to start the same way I did for row two by slip stitching into each stitch across until I get to that first corner piece. Once I'm in the corner, I'm going to chain three for my first double crochet, add two more double crochet, chain two for the corner, and then add three more double crochet for my first official cluster. After that cluster, I'm going to chain one and then add three double crochet into the chain one space of the previous row. And that will be my first side piece. Once I finish my last double crochet there, I'm going to chain one and work another corner piece with three double crochet, two chains, and three double crochet all into the same gap. And that is it. The granny square is really just a combination of double crochet clusters and chains to separate them. This is the most basic way to do it, mostly because you can practice working in the round. You can practice your double crochet and work on that muscle memory. And you don't have to worry about counting 
anything past three. So you don't have to count all the stitches in your rows to make sure you're not dropping any. You don't have to count gaps or negative space. You're really just working sets of three double crochet into gaps and chaining in between. I think for beginners, it's often difficult to find a pattern or a design that is truly beginner friendly. And this is definitely one of those. As long as you understand how to do a double crochet and a chain, you are good to go. You can also decide if you want to make a bunch of little squares and then sew them together into a blanket, or you can just make one giant granny square and that can be your blanket. I'm using blankets as an example because they're usually the first thing people try to make. But granny squares are a lot more versatile than that because you can also turn them into pillows, coasters, sweaters, t-shirts, bags, purses, whatever you like. And now here I am at my last cluster. And once I finish the last double crochet, I'm going to slip stitch into the top of the chain three that I did at the beginning of the row. And there we go. That's what it looks like. I'm going to stretch it out a little bit so that the corners actually look like corners. And that's it. So here's the situation. You just finished your first granny square. You followed the pattern to a T. It looks like a granny square, but now you're wrapped up in your blanket on the couch and you're noticing that your fingers and your toes are getting stuck in the holes. There's a wrong side and a back side, and if you're not wrapped up the right way, it bothers you because the wrong side shouldn't be facing out. And then the turning chains are leaving this weird gap, especially over time as the fibers get stretched out more. So how do you fix that? This video is to show you how you can fix those problems by making some minor adjustments to your granny square. Most of these tips are related to decreasing the size of the gaps within the granny square. The first one you have control over is the size of the circle in the very center of your granny square. So instead of chaining five to create the ring, you can chain four to create a smaller ring, or you can chain three and work all of your double crochets into that very first chain. Now this one's going to be a little difficult, but if your chains are loose enough, that can work. The other tip is to use a magic loop or adjustable loop and completely get rid of that ring in the center. The next tip is at the beginning of your row, instead of chaining three for your first double crochet, you can chain two. And then instead of slip stitching on top of the chain three, you can slip stitch on top of the second stitch right there. And then that way that'll get rid of the gap a little bit. And then instead of slip stitching to that first corner, I'm going to chain two, turn my work, and then that is what was my fourth corner, but is now going to be my first corner of round two. So I'm going to work two more double crochet, and then instead of chaining two for the corner, I'm going to chain one and work three more double crochet into that space. Once I finish my last double crochet, I am not going to chain one and work directly into the next gap. So three double crochet, one chain, three more double crochet will be the corner. By eliminating some of the chains, I'm making less space in the gaps. And since I'm not adjusting the number of stitches into those gaps, it'll make the gap slightly smaller. And then by turning my work, I'm doing two things. First, I'm eliminating the right side, wrong side, because after a while, you'd have to look very closely to figure out what the right side is, and even then it's debatable. And then, because I'm alternating directions, I'm offsetting the curling process that can sometimes happen, and the granny square itself will end up flatter. Everything else, I'm going to keep the same here. It's still going to be clusters of three double crochet and one chain in the corner, but I'm not doing chains in between anymore, and I'm not slip stitching to the corners. If you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer them, but these are just a couple tips to make your granny square even better. 